What's up, Army? Welcome back to Redemption 46 Studios. I'm Nick. Keith. I'm Jarek. I'm Zach. I'm Young Louis Vida. And I'm Curtis. You know the vibes? Y'all seen the picture? Y'all seen the thumbnail? Let's get this energy up. It's j Ho's fucking intro. Jack in the box. It's a highly fucking banger. Highly excited. Let's go. About Something about intros. Intros just get the whole feel and everything in the album going on. on All right. Let's, let's jump go. into this shit, man. Let's see what we got. What Zeus had kept inside the box broke loose from their confinement. All that was foul was now unleashed upon the world. Pandora's box? Pandora. 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 Hey! Unable to undo what she had done, That's one of the traits, fell into despair. As she grieved, she heard a feeble quiver from the box. She lifted the lid once more and out fluttered a small, bright, most beautiful creature she had ever seen. Jimin. It flapped its delicate wings as it danced around Pandora, like lightly it. brushing against her shoulder. Pandora immediately felt her angst melt away, and her heart glow with warmth. Jimmy. It was hope that was kept in the innermost oh, nook hope. of the box. Aww. It trailed behind the miasma of darkness, assuaging their ill effects on humankind. Hope gave people the will to carry on living amidst the pain and strife. Yo, yeah, that's out verbatim. That is the perfect intro. Really is. Oh fuck, that's it. That's beautiful. Okay. Shit. Let's just go right into that second track. This was cool. This was amazing. This was dope. <laughs> Not really too much to say for real. Yeah. One thing I will say though, how they talk about the hope and everything yeah, like that, the darkness the being one. shrouded around it and What's everything. Like Pandora, but right? then the fact that they kind of uh, yeah, sure. deter that with the static of the the tuning uh, radio and everything, as though that whatever uh, story is being told about hope and what it represents is being kind of brushed away. Um, and kind of. Mm -hmm. It kind of suggests the, the darker tones to come because they mm -hmm. kind of literally tune out the essence of, of what the hope represents. But I, I'm excited. It's I'm excited. Hope will, will get yeah, you don't really that was you don't really hear about too. that either. <laughs> like you hear about Pandora's box and all the secrets and all the, the well, evils of men wrong, and we'll whatever wrong, and all uh, the other stuff. The demons come out. You see it in uh, the Hellraiser movies and the Santa Third and blah 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 mm. blah blah. But you don't really hear about what, what the hope that was in the box. You know, they almost mm. never talk about that. They only talk about containing everything by closing the box back. Um, so this is a nice twist and if that's verbatim then that's the perfect fucking intro for his album yeah especially a good Jack intro in the box to, in general it's yeah. though he's in, in he's contained within that um, darkness or that essence that, that uh, chaos if you will because he did say in uh, Arson he's a fireman of chaos keeping with the Joker thing of the agent of uh, chaos or whatever yeah, it's a, it's a good prelude, too, no, just to get you ready a, to get into uh, Pandora's box. Way to set up everything, for sure. It's mm -hmm. a nice setup. Let's jump into this here. Pandora's first box. First one right here, Pandora's box. First track. Sounds like well, some Evanescence track, piano or something in the back. They call me hope. Do you know I'm hope? Pandora history. Do you know I'm hitting? Yeah, they get your chin. Can you see that it's all shit? Pandora got now in his hand. That's okay, how do we get them to these selections is fucking amazing. That's fire. This one a cool man. Let me get these bars on. Yeah, I don't know Oh, yeah. 
Like, like, West Coast, West Coast, uh, Hilton. Mm -hmm. That's real fucking hip hop, bro. Real hip hop. Yeah, off of the I'm first not. three Jones we're listening to, this is like what I would consider like I was calling it baseball bat music. Um, just like they almost like uh, feel like a cipher almost and shit. Like it's, I love the the raw. I, I guess raw energy is almost kind of what's, what's coming out. Was it a good time? It's a great time, yeah. <laughs> Were you rapping? Get that chopped uh, cheese. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I um I'm I'm feeling this a lot. I'll let y'all allude more to uh, like the Pandora's box stuff because I can really dive into it, but I'll let y'all really get chocolate off. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, bro. Uh, sure. I really want to focus on the beat. Um I love That's all where of I was gonna beat, stay at. Go ahead. That's right. <laughs> um is that a xylophone? I don't know what that sound was in the back, but he always has a very interesting catching sound um, that is very simple, but it's catchy. Because um, the last two drums, like you said, were not to cut you off. Yeah, most of them were what, Keith? Like a hard bass like line, a, yeah. the, hard a, a line regular, like a, a, high a nice drum pattern, and then like one high instrument like kind of in the back. Or a xylophone or something like but that. It's, it's very like dope. I want to. I don't want to say like industrial rock because I don't. I don't think it was that heavy or that deep into it. But it was along those lines, of like maybe. Um, so, if you were to take the sound patterns from a Lincoln Park or a Mike mm -hmm. Shinoda and then make a uh, hip hop beat out of it, this is more or less what it would sound like. Kind of like if somebody were to take Pharrell's drum kit and then make whatever, you would know it would sound have a certain sound to it, even if it's not necessarily that genre of music. This is kind of what it sounds. Like. I was going to say this kind of sounds like Joey Badass. Yeah, yeah, like that sounds exactly like that time Pro Era era. Mm -hmm. That's a, that was a Capital great time. So like I would like to me like this sounds like um, again I keep saying Fort Minor styles of beyond but like um, self-titled it's relevant self-titled apathy like those type of guys some like may not be mainstream but like underground hip hop with like a great. Almost like a grunge rap. Like, it's really gritty. It's really dirty. The beats and the production is, like, really nasty as far as, you know, the the snares aren't clean. The basses aren't clean. Everything is just kind of slightly distorted. He uses a lot of distortion, and especially in these last three tracks, you've heard periods of uh, the tracks where we, he's distorted his voice for sections of the song just to kind of change it up and switch it up. All sound dope, by the way. But it's just definitely a way more aggressive sound. Um, I fucks with it, man. I definitely I appreciate the fact. I don't know what this is, y'all. This is <laughs> just commercial. Take this off. Yeah, crap at the end of the jump. <laughs> this scary, man. Um, I really appreciate the the fact of <clears throat> that he did this song. Um, when you do kind of like an old school, this when you do a beat that isn't modern. Right, mm. or it, it's not supposed to be like an 808 trap type club radio song. When you do something like that, it's very easy to sound cringy and not authentic. Mm -hmm. He was able to pull it off in a way where it felt authentic, and he was just he just needed to get some bars off, um, which I appreciate that. Um, looking at this is the first song on the on the uh, project, but from the way it's already structured with the monologue at the beginning as the intro this song which is kind of like an old school get your bars off type it feels like he's gonna tap into all of those elements of rap um or just music in general right um if it might be a timeline where this could be you know a, a 2000s 90s type beat and then we move on to something a little bit 2010 ish i don't know just making a prediction here but if that is the approach it's very dope. It shows how versatile he is, and that's what I like about Jay Hope. He's able to kind of uh, give you a wide range of 
flows. Like, you never really know how he's going to approach a beat. And I think that's one of the most interesting mm, aspects, aspects of, of a like, rapper. a rapper or, like, an artist. It's like, you never know. What you're you never get. know. Yeah, you kind of never know. Are they going to go on some old school stuff? Are they going to go into that pop rock? Are they going to do something trap? Um, and the ones that are able to fearlessly hop from different lanes like that, usually are able to perfect that. Um, and it looks like he's been doing that. So this is hot. Yeah, this was one of the tracks, too, I was very interested to hear just because of, like, the lore with the Pandora's Box stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like, y'all probably aware, like, this has been told since, like, the Greek mythology and stuff like that mm -hmm. with you just opening up Pandora's Box and basically letting all the curses of mankind, like, go out and about. I actually do love how most of the lyrics are him alluding to him being in the box and being mm -hmm. let out. Mm -hmm. And just... Um, He's the hope that follows the darkness. Follows it. It's just... Like, I think you hit it earlier on when he was talking about it and just was like, you know, I don't think too many people look at it like no one looks at the, the hope, light that yeah. came out the box as well. Because mm, mm. with evil, with darkness, with everything, it always has to be some type of balance. Mm. So it's always so a game. evil is good? Evil is good. Mm. <laughs> good is bad. <laughs> right? Nah. But um, it's always like some type of balance and stuff. And it's just I find beauty in the sense of him being able to kind of take something that's pretty much always too frightening. And always kind of told as a cautionary tale to, of, of like to avoid curiosity sometimes, mm -hmm. and him kind of taking that and turning it more into something ironically hopeful. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of just real decent. And I kind of want to hear what else the rest of the CD is going to allude to because now we're getting you know hints and pieces kinda of kind of everything out. to fill out some of the stuff. But I, like I said, I leave some meat on the bones for y'all to kind of go off. So real Yo. quick, I know you were talking about maybe maybe he, um, during the album, he would kind of dance through time periods, but Arson is the last album or the last song Sorry. on the album. So unless he kind of makes a full circle from the beginning to the end, I think he's going to stay in this dark wheelhouse throughout mm. the entire album. Um, so that should be interesting. Well, um, some Redeemers ruin stuff. Hey, <laughs> what? <laughs> They was like, no, it's some it's some hope world shit on the album. We was like, yeah. how dare y'all? <laughs> but it, but it definitely oh, seems right, like right. it seems a little. <laughs> no, I was like, I wouldn't expect any like EDM drops anywhere on this album. Um, it's gonna fall out of place. It, 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 so unless Maybe Arson is off. like the the bonus oh. track that would just kind of put on a tail end to kind of bookend it. Or unless something like kind of sways yeah, into like, that and then it, goes back. Right, right. Like <laughs> I hope we got on a drill song. <laughs> Uh, he might. I don't know. He might have Fabio in. <laughs> um, stop. J Hope and a Fabio trip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, but I mean, I so, but I don't know. I, I'm hoping to hear. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what if he had like a purple gun with Border Hayes etched on the side? Wow. Hit you with this purple Army. heart. <laughs> Um, you know. <laughs> right now you know no but uh i'm hoping they kind of get kind of like what you were hope saying i uh, like hope hope, hope that you sharp tonight bro um that up and down that whole catalog of sound but i i, I don't know i don't think i'm gonna get that but i mean redeemers you know ruined it but yeah, it definitely isn't a sleeper track though zach what you think we on a good. We on a good start here. Honestly, I really don't got nothing to say. I just want to listen to more. Like, it's well, really we dead. listened to more right. a couple more weeks the first ago. First time already. It's <laughs> <laughs> like fuck you, man. Well, like but I doom, said, doom. I don't make the clone glitch again. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I just reprogrammed. But like, I fucking hate you guys. If you guys saw me in the beginning, uh, can you enter the uh, Jay Z gif? When he took the head off, mm -hmm. he was like, <laughs> that beat was fire. We got to answer the one where he in the, in the studio with Kanye too. I, <laughs> I gotcha. They had the perfect drops. Like, they knew when to drop. I feel like that was like a piano in like the background also for some reason. <laughs> I want to listen to this song again, like, in the car. Chilling. It's glitching. Uh, my partner Mary Jane is not I was here, gonna ask. But hashtag, hashtag I, can I can smoke, smoke to, to this. this. Definitely. Definitely. But, you smoke to this is gonna make you wanna write 
<laughs> like, yo, where's that instrumental? Let me drop the. No, <laughs> no, like, I really want to know the instrumental. Like, that joint was fire. I want to know who produced this. Ironically, the bass line is given bass line. Mm-hmm. Redeemers, let us I, know who produced slow this. Slow Rabbit, I think. Mm-hmm. Slow down. I think this is Slow Please. Rabbit. Slow Rabbit. Slow took over. He's clear. <laughs> this joke. He was like, Fine. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be quicker than that. Y'all be quicker than that. <laughs> <laughs> and now for the breakdown. <laughs> Here we go. Open up Pandora's box. No, I thought this this was incredible, honestly. Like, I, I always love um, the beat selection that he chooses or the relationship he seems to have, um, particularly as a solo artist with um, whoever he works with in the production side of things. He definitely, you know, I mean, we've heard from, like, Chicken Noodle Soup and all these things kind of more early on. Um, you know, his his catalog of musical knowledge and, in, and intelligence overall, like, you, he definitely has, like, um, he definitely has such an incredible voice within that, so I always love to. I would love to know kind of how he comes about these beat selections. Um, just knowing that the concept is so rich and, and, and deep with the whole, you know, Jack in the Box, Pandora's Box, all those kind of Greek mythology, um, you know, references within here and everything. So I, I definitely am curious about how he comes across with beat selection to authentically kind of give those things. And as Keith had said, you know, the moments where you drown out his dialogue to make it as though. Perhaps whether it's like the the box is like being shut on him and it's like drowning out his voice or anything like that, or he's screaming and it's kind of like not being heard as we heard in uh, more, for instance. Uh, so things like that are definitely really intriguing as far as the production value with or production side of everything. Um, everything that he does as far as a, his rapping ability, his versatility, the way he attacks his beats with his flows and his cadences. Um, you know whether he's weaving in and out of a beat or like kind of. Um, picking up a cadence right before the, the beat drops out and we get a new uh, instrument introduced or the progression switches a bit. So I think that like just his, his technical ability as a rapper is something that's incredibly understated mm. for sure. Um, and it, with everything with the lyrics too, like I was just looking up and getting a little bit more of... Um, because I never am fully sure in the translations, and I know some of these are put out like really quick, so I just kind of looked at something that I feel like might be a little bit more reliable. But... Um, I love the lyrics that are basically like, you know, he kind of starts everything out like they, they call me Hope, you know, do you know why I'm this great name? Pandora's history, that's my birth. Um, so he's kind of akinning that to basically like I'm literally kind of born and faded to be the hope for others yeah. in the midst of all this darkness. Um, so kind of it seems as though this Jack in the Box journey is going to be him, you know, progressing and going through that um, darkness, yeah. like his own, um, his own odyssey in a sense, if you will. Um, but then the sincerity of the sacred heart given to man by gods, uh, you know, as far as like being blessed or perhaps cursed with um you know having a good heart having a sacred heart um and just kind of the the pains and things that come with that um i love that he akins this to to essentially having to be that light uh of the world and what it kind of represents um but he also goes on to say um till the end i was framed to be to become uh bantan's hope essentially like Yes, literally J Hope, but essentially just to be this this uh, the one to pick up the mantle to represent mm. that that brighter side for everyone, um, and there, and certainly the uh, the other end of the spectrum that comes with that, you know, the pressures and everything that like that, the way you feel as though you may not be able to properly express yourself within this uh, kind of set pattern of things, um, and having the opportunity to explore that voice of those darker things in this uh, album is certainly something I'm looking forward to a lot. Um, and the, basically the whole thing at the end of the first verse, too, the ceremony of fate knighted in that name. Um, the thing I love about that, too, is because the, he alludes to the meanings and the depths of that myth. But what it comes from is you're essentially saying it's fate, meaning it's something you have no control over. But you're also saying that it's um, like from the legends of myth and myth is known to be fake. Like it means like fake or fictional. So it kind of calls into question that fate or free will aspect. So perhaps mm. we'll get more of that mm. uh, along the journey. So I'm definitely really excited to, to check out those things. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of starts off the second verse after, you know, the hook of everything and basically saying, like, I'm J-Hope, I'm this um, alter ego, I'm this alter ego, those sort of things. Like, kind of, I have to be all these things in one. But then how he basically says, kind of, I'm someone's light, someone's smile, someone's hope. Like, my activities um, are someone's life. Like, basically, everything that I'm doing, the darkness I'm going through, the, the you know, obstacles I'm having to face and take on are something that is going to represent something much greater to someone else. Um, and that's why I have to be the hope. That's why I have to be, you know, the one that uh, kind of picks up everything out of the darkness. 
Um, and as Nick had said, the, the beautiful kind of duality between opening Pandora's box is a negative thing, unleashing, you know, the chaos on the world, but also uh, being the one kind of fated to, to answer that chaos and to strike that proper balance. So I think all the all the, the lyricism and poetry within that is is incredible as well. So definitely want to give shout outs to him just just on his uh, his penmanship because um, that's incredible lyricism for sure. Um, I could go into it a bit more, but I'll let you guys jump back in real quick if you need to. No, I'm pretty much good. Just because I um, let's say I got my shit off, <laughs> and I feel like I want to hear um, a little I bit more with the album. Song. Like yeah, has yeah. To, yeah. definitely want to hear more of the album. So <laughs> yeah, y'all good? Yeah. I'll say I'll say like one or two more things real quick. Um, basically, later in the second verse, when he kind of gets into the idea of, he basically said the first the first leap know, for me to um, basically when he says he took that first leap as far as hope world and the inevitable uh, that then became necessary, like um, having to embody that hope and kind of having to to lay that groundwork and everything. Um, but then he asked the question after that, uh, dreaming of progress, but then where's my path within that? Like, what do I do now? Where do I kind of go now that I've laid out, you know, whether it's hope world or whether I've hit this benchmark, um, as we had seen, granted, this is, um, in retrospect perhaps, but how we've seen in arson where he's like, I hit this benchmark, I hit this benchmark, I did this. So kind of where does my path lie within that? Uh, once you set out and achieved everything that you perhaps, uh, had wanted to, and then he kind of alludes to this picture, this vision of him having, but then he says it was a dream drawn by Zeus, which calls back to, you know, all the Greek mythology aspects of, you know, fate, free will, destiny, those things. So um, I love that he kind of calls all those things into question and basically says, you know, all these things, whether it's like the seven deadly sins sort of things, as far as like greed, envy, jealousy, grudge, revenge and hate, all these kind of negative things, the darkness personified. Um, and then he basically says maybe that's for no reason, like maybe it just is what it is, it exists. Um, no reason for those sort of evils or anything like that, or perhaps trying to reason th that darkness within the world kind of only serves to corrupt you in a way perhaps, um, in the sense that if you're, if you're destined to be the hope for the world, then others perhaps are destined to be the negativity in the world. So it's just an interesting uh, moral conflict for sure. But then basically how he wraps everything up in the third verse is basically Benjamin Button, like not being afraid to kind of walk backwards and kind of take a step back and, and reflect on those things. Um, perhaps getting younger with age, even if you look at it that way, as far as, you know, his uh, ability, um, getting better as he grows, if you will. But um, the thing that I really wanted to point out was basically he used the same metaphor that was used in Arms vs. Dang, where he basically alludes to, I want to remind you of a little hero of the box. Um, is a frog in the well, the frog in the well thing, um, you know, how the, if a frog's contained in a well, it can't dream of the vastness of the sea or the ocean, um, narrow-mindedness in a sense. So basically kind of alluding to those things as wanting to go forth and face things head on and break out of that box. Um, so he kind of uses the frog in the well as a metaphor for the, the jack in the box that's like kind of screaming to get out, if you will. Um, so I just find that really incredible overall. And um, again, you know, all the lyricism within that and the, the incredible way he attacks the beat and flows within it. Um, the way he, he selects his beats and works with the producers as well. Um, and this is just one of, you know, the very opening tracks on this album, and it's already incredibly laid out um, as far as the lyricism and journey to come. So, you know, even though if it's only, what, a 22-minute album or something like that, there's, there's incredible uh, content and depth within that, and I can't wait to further explore that. Yeah, man, y'all know the vibes. Jump in the comments. Tell us how y'all feel about Pandora's box. Tell us if y'all got... <laughs> Box We're crazy. mature. Box We're mature. mature. <laughs> Tell us if you think this is the best track on the album. <laughs> Tell us like, oh, you cheating, motherfucker? I don't know what y'all was listening to the album at work. We didn't. None of us knew that. I literally said that in the arson video. I said I'm going to listen to this album today. <laughs> Well, yo, this cheated. is a fresh reaction from the uh, five of us. Uh, <laughs> let's jump into the next joke. We're going to holler at y'all. Peace. Take care. <laughs> so go back to sleep. My